Imagine for a moment that everything you perceive, every sensation and experience, is part of an intricate simulation. This concept, popularized by philosophers and scientists alike, suggests that our reality is not as concrete as it seems. But if this is true, how do we exit this simulation and discover the true nature of our existence? There's just one way, and that's what we'll be getting into today. Get ready as we'll soon reveal the secret way to escape the simulation we've been trapped in for our Dbyatdech. Oh, lives, how does this simulation work, though, does it? mean everything around you is a hologram. Not exactly how the simulation works. Imagine you're playing a video game where your character can travel across vast landscapes, fight battles, and collect treasures in this game. Everything feels real within its world. But behind the scenes, it's all controlled by a computer. The computer processes information, creating the illusion of a rich, dynamic environment. This is similar to the idea that our universe might be a simulation in the world of quantum physics. Particles behave in strange and unpredictable ways, much. Like elements in a video game, these particles don't have definite positions or speeds until they are observed similar to how parts of a game world only fully render. When you look at the them, this idea known as the observer effect suggests that reality depends on observation, just like in a video game where the world is built around the player's viewpoint. Let's simplify this further. Using an example from computing, think of a computer performing calculations, whether it subtracts 7 million from 6 marys, lion or 2 from 1, the processor takes the same. Amount of time in a simulated environment, the scale of these numbers doesn't matter. The operations are handled uniformly. Similarly, in a simulation, the universe's complexity doesn't impact the underlying computational process in our everyday experience. Seven million is a huge number and one is very small. However, in the computer's physical world, these differences don't exist. In the same way, both calculations are just simple operations that take the same amount of time. This shows the difference between the simulated world of programmed numbers and the physical world of microprocessors applying this to our universe. The fundamental operations of reality, like the behavior of particles, might be simple computations in a grand simulation. This perspective aligns with the principles of quantum physics, where the universe behaves more like information processing than the mechanical clockwork we once thought it was. Quantum entanglement is another concept that supports this simulation theory. When two particles become entangled, the state of one instantly influences the state of the other regardless of the distance between them. This instantaneous connection seems to defy the laws of classical physics but makes sense in a simulated universe where the distance is just an illusion and the underlying code can instantly update both particles. Moreover, renowned physicist Nick Bostrom proposed the simulation hypothesis, suggesting that future civilizations might run simulations of their ancestors if such simulations are possible, and if many simulations are created, then it's statistically more likely that W, E are in one of those simulations rather than in the original bass reality. In essence, the strange behaviors of quantum particles, the concept of entanglement and the processing power of computers all point to the possibility that our universe operates like a sophisticated simulation. By understanding these concepts, we begin to see that what we perceive as reality might just be a complex programmed environment, much like the video games we create and play from a spiritual perspective. Understanding that we might be in a simulation can be freeing it IMPL eyes that the challenges we face are part of a meticulously designed curriculum for our our souls. Every experience, every joy, and every sorrow is a lesson crafted to help us evolve. The Buddhist concept of samsara, the cycle of birth, death and rebirth, teaches that our experiences are opportunities for growth and enlightenment. Seeing our lives as part of a simulation can deepen our understanding of these cycles, encouraging us to seek enlightenment and break free from the illusion. But it's time to escape this simulation and see the outside world as it is how. Do we do this except the simulation as it is the first step?
In exiting the simulation is recognizing it for what it is. This involves questioning the very fabric of our perceived reality. Philosophers like René Dayart pondered this idea centuries ago with his famous dictum Quito Ergosum. I think, therefore, I am Dayart posited that the only certainty is the existence of the self-casting doubt on the reality of everything else. Similarly, the Hindu concept of Maya suggests that the world we perceive is an illusion, a veil that obscures the ultimate truth by embrasi. Nung these perspectives, we begin to see the simulation as a construct opening the door to deeper exploration. But how do we get used to these shocking ideas when we've lived our whole lives thinking otherwise? There are tricks and strategies IES to do. So one effective practice to gain clarity and insight into the nature of reality is meditation. Meditation allows us to quiet the mind and step back from the constant stream of thoughts and sensory inputs that anchor us in the simulated world. Through regular practice, we can reach states of deep awareness and D. Tachment experiencing moments of profound clarity. In these moments, the boundaries of the simulation can begin to blur revealing glimpses of a more expansive reality. Visualization is another powerful tool by vividly imagining that we're stepping out of the simulation. We can program our subconscious mind to seek and recognize signs of a deeper truth. Visualizations of walking through doors or portals into new dimensions or shedding layers of illusion like a snake. Shedding its skin can be particularly effective. This technique aligns with the idea O F, the law of attraction, which suggests that our thoughts and intentions shape our reality. By focusing on exiting the simulation, we set the stage for transformative experiences. Another powerful method to break free from the simulation involves altering our perception through astral experiences. Practices such as lucid dreaming and astral projection can provide direct experiences of realities beyond our physical one. In lucid dreaming, we become aware that we are dreaming and can manipulate the dream environment. This practice not only demonstrates the malleability of perceived reality, but also trains the mind to recognize and question the nature of our waking reality. Similarly, astral projection involves consciously separating the spirit from the body, exploring realms beyond the physical. These experiences can be profound, providing first-hand evidence that our everyday reality is just one layer of a much larger existence. It is also essential to cultivate a state of mindfulness in everyday life by being fully present in each moment and observing our thoughts and reactions without attachment. And it, we can begin to see the patterns and constructs of the simulation. This practice is akin to the Buddhist concept of vipassana, or insight meditation, which aims to see things as they truly are through mindfulness. We can become aware of the underlying energies and influences that shape our reality, gaining the power to transcend them. Still, these are just baby steps. There's more you can do to exit the simulation, and part of it is understanding the philosophical reasons of why it exists. Determinism versus free will. Philosophically, the concept of the sim, elation is closely tied to the idea of determinism versus free will. If we are in a simulation, are our actions predetermined, or do we have the power to change? Our fate, the Stoics. Ancient Greek philosophers believed in accepting the natural order of the universe while also exercising personal virtue and wisdom by applying this mindset. We can navigate the simulation with grace and purpose aligning our actions with a higher truth. Even as we seek to transcend the simulation itself, a key component of exiting the simulation is connecting with our inner selves, the aspect of our being that exists beyond the physical and mental constructs. This involves deep introspection and self-discovery, uncovering the layers of conditioning and programming that define our current reality. By peeling back these layers, we can access our true essence, which exists beyond the simulation practices such as journaling therapy and spiritual counseling can support this process. Providing clarity and guidance equally important are the concepts of community and shared experiences engaging with like-minded individuals on SE. Miller Paths can provide support validation and new.
perspectives group meditations, spiritual retreats and discussions can amplify our efforts, creating a collective energy that aids in transcending the simulation. This communal approach echoes the teachings of many indigenous cult cultures, which emphasize the power of community and shared spiritual practices. Moreover, embracing the mystery of life and remaining open to the unknown can facilitate our journey. The taste philosophy encourages us to go with the flow of life, embracing its inherent mystery and uncertainty by letting go of the need. For concrete answers and instead cultivating a sense of wonder and curiosity, we can become more receptive to experiences and insight that transcend the simulation. But what if we told you that it's not only the elites who keep us in the simulation, but also the very same masses? The elites control. It's a two-way street where both work directly or indirectly to keep you in the status quo of the simulation. If you want to break free, then keep watching, as we'll tell you why this happens this way. Now the, the masses keep us in the simulation in the grand scheme of the simulation. The masses play a crucial role in maintaining the stability and continuity of the constructed reality. The benefits they derive from living within this simulated existence are multifaceted touching upon aspects of comfort, security, and a sense of purpose. While the idea of being part of a simulation might initially evoke feelings of unease or skepticism, there are inherent advantages that help keep the majority engaged and invested in their simulated lives. First and foremost, the simul. Asian provides a structured environment where the masses can navigate life with a sense of predictability and order. This structure is essential for human beings who often seek stability and routine to feel safe and secure in a world where every aspect of existence is meticulously designed and controlled. People can find comfort in the familiarity of their daily lives. This predictability allows individuals to plan set goals and work towards the achieving them within a seemingly coherent framework. Moreover, the simulation offers a wide array of expair. INCs and opportunities for growth and development from personal relationships and career advancements to artistic pursuits and intellectual endeavors, the simulated reality presents endless possibilities for self-expression and achievement as long as they never escape from it. This diversity of experiences keeps the masses engaged, providing a sense of purpose and direction. The illusion of progress and accomplishment within the simulation can be incredibly fulfilling. Motivating individuals to strive for success and personal fulfillment. Another significant benefit of the simulation is the sense of community and belonging. It fosters human beings are inherently social creatures, and the simulation ensures that we are constantly surrounded by others who share our experiences and challenges. Even if they are fake bonds, this sense of community can be incredibly comforting, providing support networks and a feeling of interconnectedness. Whether through familial bonds, friendships, or professional relationships, the simulation weaves a web of connections that help individuals feel less isolated and more integrated into the fabric of society. Let's remember that 99% of people aren't aware that they are in the simulation anyway, way. So the lack of insight also prevents them from escaping on top of that. The simulation also serves as a training ground for the soul. Ancient philosophers and mystics have long posited that life is a series of lessons designed to help us grow spiritually and evolve. The structured nature of the simulation can be seen as a carefully curated series of challenges and experiences that push us to develop our, our inner strength, resilience, and wisdom by navigating the trials and tribulations of the simulated world. We are given the opportunity to refine our character and expand our consciousness. There's also the deep reality that the simulation also ensures that our basic needs are met within this controlled environment. Systems are in place to provide food, shelter, health care, and other essential services. This infrastructure supports the well-being of the masses, allowing individuals to focus on higher pursuits beyond mere survival. The Relative Abundance and ACC Accessibility of resources within the simulation. Create a foundation upon which people can build their lives and pursue their dreams. 
The issue lies within the fact that the very benefits of the simulation can also act as barriers to transcendence. The comfort, stability, and sense of purpose provided by the simulated reality can create a strong attachment to this world, making it difficult for individuals to question its nature or seek a deeper truth. The security and predictability that the simulation offers lull the masses into a state of complacency, NC where the desire to explore beyond the known, boundaries diminishes. This dynamic is reminiscent of Plato's allegory of the cave, where prisoners are chained inside a cave, only able to see shadows project ed on the wall by objects passing in front of a fire. Behind them the shadows represent their reality, and the prisoners are unaware of the true nature of the objects casting the shadows. In the allegory, one prisoner escapes and discovers the outside world, realizing the profound truth beyond the cave's confines, yet when he returns to free the O, theirs they resist and cling to their familiar shadows. The exact same situation takes place with the masses within the simulation. They may resist the idea of a reality beyond their familiar experiences, finding comfort in the known and predictable shadows of their existence, for those who begin to awaken to the possibility of the simulation, it becomes a delicate balance between appreciating the benefits of the constructed reality and seeking to transcend it. The key lies in using the tools and opportunities provided by the simulation to cultivate awareness, growth, and connection while remaining open to the mysteries beyond. But even if you awaken, chances are you probably won't know what to do after all. If you've lived your whole life following a structured system and now find yourself without it, you'll be really confused what to do when you awaken from the simulation. Awakening from the simulation is a powerfully transformative experience. This realization can be both exciting and overwhelming. So what do you do when you awaken from the simulation? How do you navigate this newfound awareness? And I integrate it into your life. Here are some steps to guide you through this transformative journey. The first thing to understand is that awakening is just the beginning. It's not an endo, but the start of a new chapter in your spiritual evolution. Recognizing that you are in a simulation opens up a world of possibilities and challenges. You must approach this new reality with an open mind and a willingness to explore and learn. Embrace the curiosity and wonder that comes with this new perspective. Question everything you once took for granted and to be open to new ideas and experiences pursue an intellectual or creative endeavor out of the norm to satisfy the void. Left behind from the simulation, many ancient and modern teachings offer valuable insights into the nature of reality and the process of awakening. For example, the writings of mystics, like Rumi or the teachings of Eastern philosophies, such as Buddhism and Taoism, can provide profound guidance. These traditions often emphasize the importance of inner exploration and the realization of one's true nature beyond the confines of the may material world one historical figure who beautifully exemplifies the integration of spiritual awakening into daily life is Meister Eckhart, a German mystic who lived in the 13th century. His teachings emphasize the importance of finding God within wealth and living a life of simplicity. Humility and service arts wisdom can inspire us to embody our spiritual insights in practical everyday actions, creating a life that reflects our highest values and aspirations as you explore these teachings. Remember that the journey of awakening is deeply purry. Sonal what resonates with one person may not. Resonate with another trust your intuition and inner guidance as you navigate this path. Your unique experiences and insights are valuable, and they will help you forge your own way. Forward, another important aspect of awakening, is integrating your new awareness into your daily life. It's one thing to have a deep realization, but it's another to live every day. Even the stressful ones in alignment with that realization. How can you begin simple from the very core of yourself? Examine your habits, beliefs, and actions. Are they in harmony with your new understanding of reality? If not, consider making changes that align with your higher awareness.
This might involve letting go of old patterns, embracing new practices, or making more conscious choices in your daily life. For instance, if you realize the interconnectedness of all beings, you might cho choose to adopt a more compassionate lifestyle. This could mean being more mindful of how your actions impact others, practicing kindness, or engaging in activities that promote the well-being of the community. I and the planet, these changes don't have to be drastic even. Small shifts can make a significant difference in how you experience and interact with the world. You might even awaken and wish to go back to the simulation. Once you realize the harsh realities of the world outside of it, be gentle with yourself and allow yourself the time and space to heal and grow. Seek out activities that nourish your soul, whether it's spending time in nature engaging in creative pursuits or simply resting and rejuvenating. Another important aspect of self-care is maintaining a healthy balance between your inner and outer worlds. While it's crucial to explore your inner landscape and develop your spiritual awareness, it's equally important to stay grounded and engaged with the material world. Finding this balance can help you integrate your awakening in a way that enhances your overall well-being and supports your continued growth. Both the elites and masses benefit from the structure community and opportunities the simulation provides. Yet it is up to each individual to decide whether to remain within the confines of the psi, mutilated reality, or to seek the deeper truths that lie. Beyond ultimately the journey of exiting the simulation is deeply personal and unique to each individual. It requires a combination of philosophical inquiry, spiritual practices, and a willingness to explore the unknown by questioning the nature of our reality, engaging in transformative practices, and connecting with our inner selves and communities we can begin to pierce the veil of illusion and discover the deeper truths that lie beyond this journey is not about escaping our current existence, but rather expanding our understanding and experiencing the fullness of reality in all its dimensions. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, feel free to leave a like and subscribe to the channel.